If you wanna learn how to sew your own clothes this year, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Candace, and I'm a sewing pattern designer and content creator, and I want to teach you how to sew. The most common question I got on Instagram is, how do I start sewing? And this isn't an easy question to answer in just one DM, so I thought I would make a video of it, and I'm actually gonna be doing an entire Learn to Sew series because there's a lot to cover. And this video is gonna tell you everything that you need to know to get started. So I'm gonna break it down into a few sections. The first part is gonna be on what kind of machine to get, what features you should look for, and where to buy one. Then we'll cover what tools you need, what kind of fabrics to start with, and then I'll finish with some suggestions for a first project to get you started. So as a little bit of background, I started sewing about five years ago when I had my first son, I was on maternity leave. And when he was about six months old, I decided that I wanted to pick up a hobby and he was going through tons of drill bibs at the time. And I thought that would be like a great first project to start with. So I just went on Amazon and bought a really cheap brother machine and made bibs for him. And as soon as I started sewing, I was hooked. And at that point I didn't even know about garment sewing. This is a little bit embarrassing to admit, but I had never even entertained the idea that people actually made their own clothes. I don't know why I didn't, but I was definitely like a fast fashion girl. I shopped a lot. Not a period of time that I'm very proud of. And that was until I started talking with one of my mom friends and she sewed a lot of her own clothes. And I thought that was so amazing. And she introduced me to the whole world of sewing your own garments and the Instagram sewing community. And it just changed my entire life. I would not be here if it weren't for her. The first pattern I sewed was actually a pair of trousers, which looking back is crazy because trousers and pants are notoriously one of the hardest garments to make because they're technically challenging to make. There's usually like a zipper involved, pleats, darts, a waistband, and fitting pants is very difficult. They actually didn't turn out too horribly, but I'm glad I had a sewing friend to turn to when I had questions or ran into problems, but I know not everyone has a sewing friend that they can reach out to, so I'm hoping that these videos can be that for you. I will be your sewing BFF. You can ask me questions in the comments, and I'm hoping to teach you everything that you're gonna need to know. Okay, so the part you've been waiting for, let's dive right in. First step is acquiring a machine. This part honestly might be one of the most intimidating steps of all because it can be so overwhelming to look for a machine. There are hundreds of options out there. There are a whole bunch of brands. They all have many different machines at many different levels with many different features. So it can be really hard to know what to get. So the first thing I always suggest to people is to ask your friends and family if they have a machine for you. Chances are somebody has a machine that they don't use anymore and will lend you or maybe give you. And that is great because the machine that you start with does not have to be the fanciest machine. Buying a fancier machine is not gonna make you get better at sewing more quickly. From the very first machine that I started with, a very cheap brother compared to my new Viking machines, which are like the Ferraris of the sewing world. While I do love my new fancy machines, they essentially do the same things. The newer sewing machines will definitely have some new cooler features, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be able to make the same garments with them both. So the next step, if you have acquired one from a friend, the first thing you should ask is, when did you last use it and does it work? And then additionally, are all the pieces there? You don't really need all the pieces, but you do need the essential stuff like cord, the pedal, and presser feet are helpful, but you can also buy those if they're missing. If they haven't used the machine in a while, you will probably wanna take it for a tune-up unless you turn it on and it's running smoothly, you're not hearing any weird sounds, and the hand wheel moves freely, so you should turn it towards you, not away from you, because that can mess up the timing. And just see how it feels. If it feels really, really stiff when you're turning the handle, it's probably old and needs a tune-up because the oil is all gunked up in there. If it does have those issues, a tune-up is only around like a hundred dollars, depending on where you live. It may be even less than that, but for me, that's about what it costs. And a lot of those shops that you bring your sewing machine to will do a free assessment. So they'll take a look at your machine, let you know what you need to have done, what parts they need to order, and you can decide whether you wanna actually do it or not and you don't have to pay anything. So that's a really nice upside. And also, if you didn't know, most vacuum repair shops also repair sewing machines because they have a lot of the same components and work in a very similar way, I'm told. <laughs> But I've brought my machines to a vacuum place before and if you have like a sewing machine shop or a dealer You can also bring your machine there depending on the brand. Okay, let's talk thrifting I would normally always suggest to buy secondhand or thrift over buying new However, that's not my advice for sewing machines and here's why 
I have yet to see a good sewing machine at a thrift store and I go thrifting a lot and I have been going for a number of years and I always look for sewing machines every time I thrift. And the ones that I see at Value Village or like Goodwill or Salvation Army, they're always in really rough shape. I always do those like tests. I turn the hand wheel, I look at the parts and most times they're missing a cord. A lot of times they're really gunked up or they just look really banged up. Like the needle shank, like where the needle attaches will be completely like crooked. Not to say that these machines can't be fixed, but you're probably gonna be paying quite a bit for the tune up and and parts and if you buy a vintage machine it could be harder to find parts for those the one place that I do recommend buying from if you have something like this I bought a vintage thinger in Vancouver when I was living there and there's the Vancouver flea market in the east side of Vancouver and there's a guy there that sells sewing machines and I always went by his stall to check but he would actually like do the tune-up get it all up and running and you could test it out there and that was perfect so I bought I think it was a 401, I can't remember the number, but it, I'll put a picture of it. It was this gorgeous like retro brown Singer sewing machine and I really liked that machine. So if neither of those options are for you and you wanna buy new, my suggestion is to buy a very basic machine just in case you don't like sewing. You might think that you'll like sewing and then end up hating it and you don't wanna have like a $500 machine just sitting around. So. There are lots of machines that are between the $100 and $300 range new that you can buy that will totally fit your needs and you'll be able to use them for quite a while. The only limitation I would say on cheaper machines is that they're probably not able to handle thicker fabrics very well and they don't have like the needle piercing power. That's the biggest difference between the very beginner machines and like a mid-level machine. So for sewing machine brands, you're gonna to wanna to look out for one of the bigger brands. So that would be Singer, Viking, Faf, Brother, Janome. Those are the biggest brands out there. They've been around a long time, so you know you can trust them. There are a few other big brands out there like Bernina or Baby Lock, but these ones won't have as budget-friendly options for beginner machines. Now that we've narrowed down the brands, here are the features that you wanna look for. So for garment sewing, you're really only gonna need a machine that does a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, and a buttonhole. Nice to have features beyond that, I would say are an automatic needle threader that makes your life a lot easier. A lot of basic machines come with that. Automatic thread cutting is really nice. One step buttonholes and multiple needle positions and multiple speeds are also a nice thing, but they're not a must have. I've seen a lot of sewists on Instagram um, recommending the Singer Heavy Duty machine. I've heard that's a really good beginner one to start with. I started with this brother one. Viking also makes a really great beginner machine and it's the E10, I believe. I'll put a little picture here. And next up, we're gonna talk about all of the tools that you'll need. There are tons of sewing tools that you can buy and I might be the queen of sewing tools because I love sewing tools, but you really don't need that much to start. The really important things that you absolutely do need would be a pair of fabric shears. Regular scissors just don't cut it. Get it? <laughs> That was a bad joke. But regular scissors will not cut your fabric. They're not sharp enough or sturdy enough. Just don't even bother. Go buy yourself a good pair of scissors. The scissors that I now use are DH scissors. These are their nine inch midnight shears. They sent these to me and they engraved them. I love them so much. I do have an affiliate link, so if you wanna support me, I'll put that down below. If you're looking for a slightly more affordable pair of scissors, you can buy the Singer ones. They're available at Walmart, I believe, and Amazon, and they're about $20. The next thing you'll need is a pair of thread snips. These are just to cut the threads when you're done sewing, and they're pretty useful for lots of things in sewing when you have to clip corners or notches or just loose threads. You'll need a pair of thread snips. The next thing you'll wanna buy are needles. You can buy multi-packs like this, these are good ones to get because they're universal. You can use them for most projects. They come in packs with different sizes. So this is 70, 80, 90. The numbers correspond to how thick the needle is, the lower the number, the smaller the needle. We'll talk about needle types and fabrics in another video. So don't worry, we'll cover that later. The next thing you'll need is thread, of course. I would just get some black and white to start with. What you don't wanna buy is the giant value pack of like 50 different colors of thread on Amazon. They are terrible quality and they will make you think you suck at sewing because they're gonna jam up in your machine, cause your machine to skip stitches. Just take my word for it. Don't buy it and don't bother with it. I'll talk a little bit more about thread in a future video as well, but I would also suggest buying thread new if you buy it from the thrift store or 
get it used secondhand. If it's really old, it will be really fragile or could be really fragile and it could break easily so your projects won't last as long. So buy new and also buy polyester sew all thread and that will be good for most of your projects, like 99% of them. The next thing you'll need is a seam ripper because none of us are perfect and you're gonna make mistakes and that's okay, that's how you learn. But this will be your best friend. I just get these cheap value pack ones on Amazon because they don't last that long. They get dull and then they become dangerous <laughs> because you'll be trying to rip a seam and it's not gonna be cutting and then you'll end up ripping through your project or poking yourself. So you'll need a few of these. Don't bother buying like a $10 one because it's also gonna get dull and then you're not gonna be able to use it and it costs you $10. So there's my free tip. Okay, and next you're gonna need some clips or sewing pins. These basically do the same thing as pins, but I actually really prefer using these over pins as every time I use pins, I poke myself. If you're buying pins, you can either buy the regular ones that are, <laughs> this one is so crooked. You can just buy like plastic head ones like this. But if you wanna buy some that might last you a bit longer, I would suggest getting these little glass head pins because you can iron on top of them and they don't melt, which is helpful. The ones that you don't wanna get are these ones. They're draping pins. These are the first pins that I bought myself, but I hate these pins. They get lost in the carpet, you step on them. They're not easy to pick up when you're sewing. So I don't like those. And the next thing you'll need is an iron. You really can't sew without an iron because you need to press seams, you need to press your fabric. You use it pretty much during the entire sewing process. So get yourself an iron. It doesn't have to be expensive. I used my husband's like 12 year old iron when I started and didn't replace it until it just broke. But yeah, a very basic iron will do you just fine. The next thing you'll need is a measuring tape. You'll want a soft measuring tape like this because you're gonna need to take your measurements if you wanna make clothes that fit you. Buy one of these at the dollar store. They're super cheap, maybe buy three. I lose mine all the time. You'll also need fabric markers. These you'll use for marking notches or you might be tracing your pattern onto fabric. This is the Choco chalk pen. It's got like a little, a little wheel here. I actually don't love this as a marking tool. I find that the chalk disappears really easily, but this one you'll need for like darker fabrics because you can't use a fabric marker on dark fabrics because it won't show up. These are my favorite fabric markers to use. They're the Adger brand. They're water soluble and they disappear really easily with just water. You don't have to use soap or anything. And the last thing you'll need is safety pins. So you only need one, <laughs> you don't need a lot, unless you lose them. You're gonna need safety pins to turn straps or thread drawstring through a casing or elastic. So get a couple safety pins. The last thing you'll need are some hand sewing needles. I inherited these from a family friend who passed away. I love vintage stuff. How cute are these vintage needle packs? Love that. But you'll need these for random things like, you know, closing a little hole or any hand sewing stuff. So just get some of these. All right, so moving right along, let's talk about fabric next. So without getting into too much detail, there are basically two categories of fabric, wovens and knits. Knits are stretchy fabrics, think like athletic wear, probably like your basic tank tops or leggings, that's all knit fabric. Woven fabrics are fabrics like cotton or linen, fabrics that don't stretch. My suggestion to you is to start with wovens because they are much easier to work with. They're a lot more stable under the machine and just a lot easier to handle in general. You can either buy quilting cotton at the fabric store or what I like to do and what, how I started was by thrifting bed sheets. A lot of bed sheets are 100% cotton. My stash is full of bed sheets. Every time I go to the thrift store, I buy bed sheets because I use it to make mock-ups, test things out, and I also make garments from them. Don't let anyone tell you that you shouldn't make garments out of bed sheets. I hear a lot of talk online about how it's gross and dirty to do that, but there are such things as washing machines. And if you've ever stayed in a hotel, you've slept in sheets that hundreds of other people have slept in. So, you know, if you're okay with that, you should be okay with making clothes out of them too. Um, the only one thing I'll say about thrifting fabric is make sure to smell it. If it smells like mothballs, don't buy it because it's so hard to get that smell out and it's really gross. Um, so yeah. 
Okay, we're finally at the last part of this video, which is what kind of project you should start with. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I did start with a pair of trousers, which is not something that I would recommend. I definitely would say you should start with a easier project and kind of easier way in. But what I do wanna say is that I think it's really important to start with a pattern that you're really excited about. I see a lot of people suggesting that you should start with like a pillowcase or a drawstring bag or some kind of like crafty small pattern. And while I think those are great for building skills, I'm just not that excited about those things. And I think if I had started by making crafts, I might've lost steam and not wanted to continue because I just don't find that that fun. And it's much more cool to be able to put on a piece of clothing that you've made rather than pillowcase on your pillow. It's a different sense of accomplishment I feel like. And if sewing clothes is your goal, I recommend starting with a clothing sewing pattern. Or alternatively, I feel like clothes and bags kind of go hand in hand. Like if you are a garment sewist, you probably have made some bags. So I also think a bag pattern is cool because you can wear it and use it as well. And I'm also working on a free pattern that I'm hoping to release really soon. And that will be part of this like beginner video series. But if you're looking for simple top patterns, I would suggest a boxy top pattern. So Lou Box Top by Sew DIY is the one that comes to mind first. There's also the Augustina top, which is another boxy top, and that is on the fabricstore.com. Another pattern that I think is really great is the Ogden Cami by True Bias. And that's a really beginner friendly pattern that I started with. It's a great dartless camisole pattern with a V-neck and it's got a partial lining. So it'll teach you the skills of how to line a garment. It's got spaghetti straps, lots of good techniques that will get you going with that one. So that concludes this video. I hope that it was helpful and that you have all the information you need to start gathering supplies and getting ready to start your sewing journey. A lot of the products that I mentioned I have linked in my Amazon store and I do have that affiliate link for the LDH scissors in the description box below. If you have any questions at all about anything that I covered or if you have suggestions for topics that you'd like me to cover in this series definitely leave me a comment below and hit that subscribe button if you want to come back and see all of the learn to sew content that's going to come up. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!